In this video, I am going to cover a very simple topic that is movements of the earth. It is very simple to topic but it is still a basic topic. So I will have to cover it. So let's go. So there are two motions of the earth. Those are rotation and revolution. These two motions are responsible for different kinds of phenomena. For example, the rotation of earth is responsible for day and night whereas the revolution is responsible for changing of the seasons. So let us first see the rotation. The first primary motion of the earth is rotation. The earth rotates in counterclockwise pattern. Spinning about its own axis once every 24 hours, means one day. The earth wobbles as it rotates, similar to a spinning top, because the rotation of the earth occurs at a side slight tilt. This tilt is approximately 23 and half degrees. The tilt of the earth as it rotates, creates a different gravitational forces at the north and the south poles, for example, Coriolis force. So, let's understand the rotation from this step. You can see the imaginary axis which is passing through the north pole and south pole of the earth is tilted by 23 and half degrees. And the rotation of the earth around its own axis is from west to east or counterclockwise direction. The next motion is revolution. As the earth rotates on its axis, it also revolves in orbit around the sun. It takes exactly 365 days for earth to make one full trip around the sun. That is our definition of a year. The earth alone follows a circular path as it travels around the sun in a counterclockwise pattern. This path is therefore refers to as the plane of elliptical orbit because the earth revolves around the sun in elliptical orbit. So let's understand this devolution from this diagram. You can see the object in the sun center is the sun, which is the ultimate source of energy for whole world. And you can see at different months, earth is at different position, uh, rotating around its own axis as well as it is revolving around the sun in counterclockwise fashion. So let us discuss the difference between rotation and revolution. The earth rotates on its own axis whereas it revolves around the sun. The rotation is nothing but to spin its spin around the own axis whereas revolution means to move around any specific object. The rotation of the earth takes 24 hours whereas the revolution of the earth takes 365 days or total one year. So this is the end of this lecture. Guys, we will have to find the answer of following three questions. The first question is, why the sun rises in the east? Second question is, what the shape of the earth is called? And the third question is, how much is the distance between earth and the moon in kilometers? These are very easy questions and you should answer me these questions in the comment box. So thank you guys. In this video, we will discuss the difference between distance and displacement. So let's start our video. The first point for the difference is definition. The complete length of the path between any two points is called as distance, whereas displacement is the direct length between any two points, which is measured along the minimum path between them. In the image, you can see the points A and B. A is the starting point, whereas B is the end point. When we move towards the point B from A along the path of ACDB, the ACDB will denote distance. And the direct length between point A and the end point B will give us displacement. Second difference is quantity. Distance is a scalar quantity as it only depends upon the magnitude and not the direction. Whereas displacement is a vector quantity as it depends upon both magnitude and direction. So the difference between scalar and vectors. A scalar quantity has only magnitude whereas a vector quantity has magnitude as well as direction. The examples for scalar quantities are distance, speed, mass. And the examples for vector quantities are displacement, velocity, weight and acceleration. The third difference is root. Distance gives the detailed root information that is followed while traveling from one point to the another. Whereas the displacement refers to the shortest path. It does not give the complete information of the root. But it only depends upon the 
starting and end point. So in the image, you can see the distance is given by the blue curve, whereas the displacement is given by the straight line between initial point A and the end point B. As displacement does not give information about the path, but distance do give information about the path. The fourth difference is in the formula. We all know the formulas of speed and velocity. Speed is distance upon time, whereas velocity is displacement upon time. So the formula for distance becomes distance is equal to speed into time and the formula for displacement is displacement is equal to velocity in the, into time. So let's see this small topic that is the difference between speed and velocity. Speed is the distance travelled by the object per unit time. The velocity is displacement of the body per unit time. Speed is the scalar quantity hence the direction is not required. Whereas the ve velocity is vector quantity. Here, direction is required. The unit of speed is meter per second and it is always positive. Whereas, the unit of velocity is same as the speed, that is meter per second, but the velocity can be negative. The next difference is possible values. The distance can only have the positive values as it does not depend upon the direction. Whereas, the displacement can be positive, negative, and even two. So, in the image, you can see the starting point is on the right side. Whereas the final position is at the left side, and the particle is covering the distance of 3 meter in the left direction. So the distance doesn't require direction, hence it will be only depend on magnitude and it is positive 3 meters. Whereas displacement will care about the direction, and as per the sign convention, this movement will give the displacement of minus 3 meters. The last difference is according to the path. The distance depends upon the path that is it changes according to the path taken whereas displacement does not depend upon the path and it only depends upon the initial and the final position of the body so you can see in the image the initial position is a whereas the final position is b the path 1 and path 3 will give us the distance and as the path 1 path 2 and path 3 will change the distance of the particle will change but displacement will not Give the information about the path as it will be the straight distance hence the displacement between initial position a and final position b will be given by the path t as it is a straight line joining these two points the so today's question are first question what is the unit of angular displacement the second question is what is the change in acceleration per unit time is called as and the last question is state the electric current as scalar or vector so we will discuss the difference between mass and weight. So let's start our video. Guys, these two terms are often encountered by us in our day-to-day -day life. Whenever we discuss the weight of the body, we actually talk about its mass. But these two are not the synonyms. In fact, these two are different notions. Due to lack of knowledge, people use these terms interchangeably. And which is incorrect. So I have tried my best to simplify the difference between mass and weight in the details. The first difference is in its meaning. Mass refers to the quantity of matter contained in a body. While weight implies the force acted upon the object due to the pull of gravity. In the given image, you can see a blue sphere having some mass m and its weight will be the force of gravity pulling that sphere in downward direction. The second difference is mass is the measure of inertia while weight is the measure of force. Friends, inertia is the feature of a body that opposes the change in the state and the weight is product of mass and acceleration due to gravity that is small g. In the example, you can see elephant has more mass than human. Hence, it's harder to change the elephant's motion than a human's motion. Therefore, more the mass, more will be the inertia. And when it comes to the weight, it's nothing but the force equally to product of mass and acceleration due to the gravity. The next difference is according to the location. The mass always remains same irrespective of the location, but weight varies as per the location. For example, the body will have 
same mass on the earth and on the moon but due to the change in value of small g that is acceleration due to gravity the weight of that body will be different on earth and moon and earth has more value of acceleration due to gravity than moon hence the weight of that body will be more on earth and will be less on moon. the next difference is according to quantity the mass is a scalar quantity while weight is a vector quantity we have already discussed the difference between scalars and vectors in the last video in short the scalar quantity has magnitude while vector quantity has magnitude as well as direction the mass can never be zero as it is the matter contained in the body but weight can be zero when the value of small g that is acceleration due to gravity is zero so the example given is the weightlessness phenomena in the space where the value of g equals zero hence astronaut feels that he or she has no weight the next difference is on the basis of their measurement for measuring mass one uses ordinary balance or the electronic balance but for measuring weight one have to use the spring balance as given in the image the si unit of mass is kilogram whereas the si unit of weight is newtons which is the unit of force so friends questions for this video or this topic are the first question what is inertia the second question is if a body has mass of 60 kg on the earth what will be its mass on the moon and the last that is third question is on which location will you weigh more means on poles or at equator and the reason for it that means what in this video we will discuss the difference between latitude and longitude first we will see some important points about both guys the surface of earth is vast enough that it was difficult to locate any point without the utilization of mathematical method for this purpose fictional lines are drawn on the earth globe known as latitudes and longitudes both these are imaginary lines which are used to locate point on the globe and measured in degrees latitudes are horizontal imaginary lines whereas the longitudes are vertical imaginary lines you can see them in the figure some of the important latitudes are for example the equator the tropic of cancer the tropic of capricorn the arctic and antarctic circles and also you can see the prime meridian that is 0 degree longitude so let's move to the difference the first difference is in the meaning latitude implies the geographic coordinates which gives us the distance of the point north and south of the equator on the other hand the longitude implies to geographic coordinate and that identifies the distance of a point east or west of the prime meridian second is direction the direction of latitudes is from east to west and the direction of longitude is north to south that intersects both the poles the the range of latitudes is from 0 to 90 degrees either north or south of the equator but the longitudes range from 0 to 180 degree friends observe both the images in the left you can see equator in the middle that is 0 degree and when one moves from equator to either south or north the range is 90 degree at the poles on the right side we have the prime meridian that is 0 degree longitude in the center that is vertical line the vertical line in the center and opposite to it is 180 degree and opposite to it, the parallel circles from equator to north or south poles are termed as parallels of latitude and the lines of reference running from the two poles that is north to south are meridians of longitudes the lines total number of lines of latitudes are 180 whereas the total number of longitude lines are 360 you can clear this idea from the given images the next difference is on length the parallels of latitude are of unequal lengths but the longitudes are are of all equal length due to the geoid shape of earth 
there is a difference between lengths of latitudes. In the image, you can see the one degree of longitude at the equator gives us the distance of 111 kilometers, while the one degree of longitude at 60 degree latitude just gives the distance of 55 kilometers. The next difference is the parallelism. The latitude lines are parallel, whereas the longitude lines are not parallel. You can see in the image, all the circles that are constructed by the latitude lines are parallel, whereas the longitude lines are only parallel at the equator, whereas they in intersect at the south or north poles. The last difference is about the classification that, that is given by latitude and longitudes. The latitude gives the classification of heat zones. In the left image, you can see the heat zones near the equator up to the both tropics that is Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. The zone is tropical zone or torrid zone. Further, when we move about move to north or south pole, it gives us the temperate zones. And near the poles, there is frigid zone or polar region. On the other hand, the longitude gives the time zones. In the image, you can see the map of United States of America and the four time zones that are being utilized in different parts of USA. In this video, we will see the difference between potential and kinetic energy. So let's start our video. The first difference is on the basis of definition. The kinetic energy is the energy produced by an object by the virtue of its motion. Whereas the potential energy is the energy produced by an object by the virtue of its shape, position as well as the configuration. The second difference is on the basis of their transferability. The kinetic energy can be transferred from one moving ob object to the other. For example, in collision, you can see the image, the image of ball strike. When the ball strike the bells, the energy in the ball is get transferred in the bells. That is kinetic energy. But when we talk about the transferability of potential energy, the potential energy cannot be transferred. The next difference is on the basis of relation to environment. Guys, kinetic energy of an object is relative to other moving and stationary objects in its immediate environment. But the potential energy is not relative to environment of an object. The next point is the formula. The formula of kinetic energy is 1 by 2 m into v square, where m denotes the mass of the object and v is the velocity of the object or the speed of the object. The formula of potential energy is mgh. m is mass of the object, g is acceleration due to gravity and h is the height from bottom. The next point of difference is the determining factors. As we see the formula of kinetic energy that is 1 by 2 mv square hence the determining factors for kinetic energy are mass of the object and the velocity. Similarly, we see the formula of potential energy that is mgh. Hence, the determining factors for potential energy are mass, acceleration due to gravity and the height or the distance. The next point, how they are measured. Kinetic energy is measured from the place itself as it depends upon the mass and velocity at that point. Whereas, the potential energy is always measured from the bottom that is that is we can see in the formula it has mg and h that h de denotes the distance from the bottom or the height. So the last part that is examples. The famous example for kinetic energy is the flowing water such as falling from the waterfall or the dam. And the example for potential energy is the water at the top of waterfall before the falling or the still water in the dam. In the image provided you can see there are many more examples of potential energy as well as the kinetic energy. In this video, we will see the difference between heat and temperature. The first difference is on the basis of meanings. Heat is the amount of energy contained in a body. On the other hand, the temperature is the measure of intensity of heat. The, 
the heat is the amount of energy that is contained within a body whereas the temperature is the measure of intensity of heat means whether the body is hot or the cold depends upon the given by the temperature the second point of difference is measures guys heat measures the total kinetic and potential energy contained by molecules in an object whereas the temperature measures average kinetic energy of molecules in a given substance the third point of difference is the property guys heat flows from hotter object to cooler object if you can see in the image that heat is flowing from hot body to the cold body on the other hand the temperature rises when a body is heated and falls when it is cooled the next point of difference is the working ability of heat and temperature guys heat is considered as a form of energy and hence the heat is converted into the work for example the heat engine in which the heat is converted into the useful work whereas the working ability of temperature is nothing next point of view on the basis of their symbols and unit guys heat is denoted by letter capital q and it has the unit of it has the si unit of joules the temperature the temperature is denoted by the capital letter t and the si unit of temperature is kelvin for example q is equal to 50 joules q is the symbol whereas joule is the unit and on the other hand t is equal to 298 kelvin means t gives us the symbol of temperature and k is the unit that is kelvin to measure heat the device which is used is calorie meter whereas to measure temperature the device used is known as the thermometer in this video we will see the difference between weather and climate friends these two terms are often perceived as being the one and the same thing these two terms are actually different that are closely related to each other the meaning of both terms the weather is everyday atmospheric condition of a particular region as regards temperature humidity wind speed etc on the other hand the climate alludes to standard pattern of weather of a particular place that is taken over more than 30 years guys weather is minute by minute state of atmosphere in an area whereas average weather in a region is called as climate the next difference gives the representation given by both terms the weather gives what are the conditions of atmosphere in a geographical location over short period in contrast to this climate gives in what way atmosphere act over typically long period the variation guys weather of a weather of a location where is constantly but the climate does not vary constantly as it is a long time term or the phenomena the factors which affect weather and climate friends weather is affected by temperature humidity air pressure cloudiness precipitation etc whereas climate is affected mainly by temperature and precipitation the next part of difference is their assessment that is the assessment of weather is done for short time means a day or for a week but the assessment of climate is done over a long period means for many years the study of weather is called as meteorology whereas the climatic study is termed as climatology to sum up this topic i can say the weather is nothing but how a specific region feels at a particular moment and the climate is aggregate of weather that is recorded over a long period at that specific location we will discuss the difference between energy and power friends energy and power are the two fundamental concepts related to work they are used as a synonym but they are not one and the same thing 
So let's discuss difference between them. The first difference is in the meaning. Guys, energy is defined as the ability of an object to do work. Whereas power implies the rate at which the work is done. In the final terms, if an object is capable of doing work, it is said to have energy. And the power gives rate at which an object performs an activity. The next difference is on the basis of the representation. Energy represents how much work a person can do. On, on the other hand, power represents how quickly the work can be done. The next factor is formula and symbol. Energy is generally denoted by letter E or W. Whereas, power is denoted by capital letter P. The formula of work is multiplication of force and displacement. And the formula for power is the work divided by time. As by using those formulas, we can get the SI units of both energy and power. The SI unit of energy is joules. For example, energy equal to 50 joules. The SI unit of power is Watt, for example, power is equal to 5 watts. The next difference is on the basis of their conversion. Energy can be converted from one form to another and we know the law of conservation of energy. On the contrary, power cannot be transferred from one form to another. So in the given image, you can see how energy transfer takes place from potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa. The next factor is storage. The energy can be stored, but the power cannot be stored. Hello everyone. Welcome to the 10th lecture of Basic Funda. In this video, we will discuss the difference between stars and planet. At night, when we look up high in the sky, we notice trillions of shining dots, out of which some appear brighter, some are bigger, while some of them twinkle. Guys, these dots are nothing but stars and planet. These two bodies might look alike, but as per science, there are huge differences between stars and planet. And in this video, I will try to simplify the difference between stars and planet. So let's start today's video. The first difference is on the basis of their meanings. Stars are the astronomical objects that emit their own light produced due to the thermonuclear fusion occurring at its core. That is, the fusion reaction is nothing but the reaction in which two lighter nuclei combine to form a heavy nucleus. So, in the core of stars, the thermonuclear fusion takes place and due to this, they emit large energy and their own light. Whereas the planets refers to the celestial object that has a fixed path or orbit in which it moves around a star. For example, the earth revolving around sun. The second difference is on the basis of light. Stars have their own light, but the planet don't have their own light. For example, sun emits light, but earth or the Mars do not emit light. The next difference is on the basis of their position. Guys, stars changes the stars change their position, but due to the substantial distance, it can be seen after a long time, and we can't perceive it while on the earth. But the planets change their position as they are revolving around a specific star. Size and shape. The stars are big as compared to planets and they are dot shaped. Whereas the planets are small as compared to stars and they are generally sphere shaped. The next difference is on the basis of temperature. The temperature at the stars is very much high. 
whereas the temperature on the planets is low. If you compare the temperature of Sun and Earth, that is star and planet, we can see the temperature at the Sun's core or the surface is 6000 Kelvin, whereas the temperature at the Earth is only 288 Kelvin. The next difference is on the basis of number of stars or planets in our the number of stars and planets in our solar system. Guys, there is only one star in our solar system and that star is the sun, ultimate source of energy. And the planets, there are eight planets in our solar system. The Pluto is not considered as the planet. The eight planets are, as their increasing distance from sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Friends, the stars do twinkle but planets do not twinkle. It is a very basic difference and we have learned it from our childhood. The next difference is the matter containing stars or stars and planets. The matter in stars is hydrogen, helium and other lighter elements. Whereas the planets are composed of solid, liquid or gases or the combination of these phases of materials. So thank you guys. This was today's video. If you like this video, please share this with your friends and ask them to subscribe the channel. Thank you. Take care and Jai Hind.